This Tech Channel video is brought to you by our Tech Channel partner, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a perfect solution to make your PCB board ideas a reality. Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. And I'm Tanner. And today we're taking you down a whole road that frankly we could probably live about 10 years on, couldn't we? We probably could. And we might not even still scratch the surface. You're absolutely right. So today's video here, we're going to basically kind of dig into this, not show you all the functionality, but kind of what the components are in the Arduino, right? Yeah, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's on. This is an Arduino Uno. Um, there's a bunch of different manufacturers that make them. You can get genuine Arduinos. Um, you can get these various different, uh, you know, knockoffs or minor change versions. Um, but I want to talk about what's on the board and why those things are there. And then uh, in the next episode, we're going to start talking about actually writing code for it. Love it. All right, let's get started here. Now, what is an Arduino board? Well, it's a, it's a microcontroller development board and it's, it's open source hardware and it's open source software. And there's, there's actually, it's not just one board, it's a whole, a line, a whole of boards. line of boards and products. And because it's open source, um, you can download the design files for this board off of their website. Mm -hmm. You can um, make changes, make modifications, however you'd like. Send that circuit board off to JLC PCB, yep. get your new board that's Arduino based, and install your software on it, and you're good, and to, you're go. good to go. So, um, it's, it's a, an extremely powerful tool, and, and I mentioned before, I, I think if, if I was trying to learn electronics today, this is where I'd start. Because it just puts everything together. It does. It, it, it really, it, it's what gives you the ability to really easily make rapid prototypes, to um, be able to test your ideas quickly, make proof of concepts. Um, it's, it's just a really powerful world to, yeah. to, to play in. I've heard it compared to like the Swiss Army knife of circuitry. It's, 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 that's, a, that's a good way to explain it, yeah. So you're taking the power and complexity of a microcontroller that runs software that you can write on the computer um, and you're putting it in a board that's accessible and approachable. So what do we got here, bud? Okay, so again, this is the Uno model. There's um, hundreds of different variations, but um, this is one of the genuine models and it was, it's probably the easiest entry level get into it and, and yeah. get going. If you build something that works on this, um, there's a good chance that there's a smaller, lighter weight version that might be able to be put on an airplane or whatever Perfect. That's, uh, that's compatible as well. Yeah. And there's bigger boards that have, let's say, more pins and more input outputs. Yep. Um, there's some boards that have like built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, um, so that gives you a whole range of, wow. of additional possibilities. But this is kind of the basic standard, it does most things, and, and, and if Very it good. doesn't do it, you can add expansion stuff to it to, to add Excellent. those capabilities. So, Talk about what's what else here. Um, this this chip here is the main controller. It comes in a couple different packages. So sometimes your Arduino board will have this big chip on it. Sometimes it'll just be a little tiny square chip that sits next to it here. But that's really the chip that does 99% of what the Arduino does. It runs a, a piece of software on it called the Arduino Bootloader. Okay. Um, and that's what that's what gives it the magic that allows you to easily install code on it over and over again. Um, using your the Arduino IDE in your computer. Beyond that, it also has uh, a regulator, power regulator. Um, I believe the voltage on this is uh, it's like seven to 12 volts or nine to 12 volts, somewhere in that range. Um, the regulator uh, creates both 3.3 and five volts. That's available on these output pins right here and right here. And uh, we'll put a we'll put a, yeah. a diagram in the description so you can see. But um, so that's 3.3. That's five volts. You got a couple of ground pins here. Those are all coming out of that regulator. So if you put you put 12 volts into the input here, you're still gonna get 3.3 and five volts out there. So it's got that for powering external things. Those are current limited, uh, so you don't wanna you don't wanna run a big electric motor off of them or something like that. But for small things, you know, powering your your prototype circuit or whatever, you can use that. Um, there's one other chip on here that's being used, and that's a, a USB to serial converter chip. Different manufacturers use different ones, so you may have to get different drivers for your Arduino based on who made it. Um, the most common one's an FTDI chip. I think those drivers come with the Arduino program when you download it. Um, if not, a lot of times when you buy these, it'll say in the instructions, download the driver here. Um, you've got a USB port here. Most of the boards come with a USB cable mm -hmm. to connect it to your computer. We also got a reset switch. So if something goes, you know, it's not working right or whatever, it's time for a reset, you push that, it, it reboots and goes back to the beginning of the program. The other thing is uh, you've got a couple of LEDs on here. Two labeled RX and TX. Those are connected to one of the hardware serials. So 
when this is communicating through the hardware serial, you'll see these flashing basically that there's serial data coming through. And the last one is this LED right here. That's actually connected to digital pin 13. So any output on 13 will also cause that LED to light up. So a lot of times you might write in your code to write out 13 high and that's saying basically turn on 13. Okay. And that'll, that'll light this LED up. So that kind of leads into this whole row of, of connections here. There are, uh, there's actually 14 total um, digital general purpose IOs. Which IOs, input, output. Input, so output, okay. General purpose means, or general purpose IO or GPIO, means that it's a, it's a pin that's, that's totally software configurable. Um, you, you, it doesn't have, no, the designer of the chip didn't really give it any specific purpose. They just said, we'll let the, we'll let the uh, engineer or whoever's designing write software to tell us what to do with that pin. So my understanding is correct that basically every one of these outputs here, input outputs, can basically do a different thing, whether it's controlling noise or it's controlling a function of a, of a servo or something like that. Yeah, so not only control, that's the output side, okay. but also sensing, oh. detecting button presses, the input things side. like that. It's an input side too. And it's all based on what you tell it in the software. When we talk about that, you'll be able to see how we configure pins for input versus output. And we'll talk about you know writing values out to a pin versus okay. receiving information or receiving a signal on that pin. That's amazing. So you can okay. do either. Um, so it's not every one of these. The top few do other things. We have um, analog reference pins and ground and some other stuff happening at the top of this last header. But the first 14 pins on this side are all general purpose IOs, digital general purpose IOs. If you look at the labeling here, You'll see some of those pins have uh, this little squiggly line on them. And that means that that pin supports pulse width modulation, so PWM. Um, PWM is a way to take a digital signal, which is usually just on and off, and to kind of make it seem like it's analog. So you can like fade an LED with a PWM output. Um, it basically varies the duty cycle of the LED. It's how much, how much what percentage of time is it on versus when it's off. And um, with those pins, so like you'll see some people hook up Arduinos, they'll have a, a multicolor LED hooked up to the Arduino and they'll be fading it through all the colors. Mm -hmm. They have the, that LED hooked up to the PWM outputs. Very cool. So that's what those do. That's what that little symbol, that little squiggly line denotes. That's also a very common thing with model airplanes. The servos generally work off of pulse width modulation. Exactly right. So if, if, you, um, if you hook a servo up to this, you'll be connecting the signal pin to a pin that supports some kind of PWM output. Connected to a squiggly line. Yep. Very cool. So um, the other thing you'll notice here too is some of these pins are, are noted as RX and TX, um, zero and one. Those are also connected to the RX and TX LEDs. Those two pins, in addition to being general purpose IOs, also support hardware serial. So if you need a serial communication port, you can use those too. And serial communication is where basically the data's come in like a, a freight train, one behind each other, right? Yeah, sort of. So you've got a receive side and a transmit side. The general idea is you pick a you pick a timing that all the devices on the serial bus know what the timing is, um, how frequent you're going to get a bit of data, and then once that's agreed upon, the um, the data is just transmitted at that frequency. Yeah. So the other thing here, so we talked a little bit about the power pins on this side. There's a reset pin that can be used, does the exact same thing as the power button. So you can put a signal on that to reset the Arduino remotely. Um, let's say you've got two Arduinos hooked up to each other and, and this one needs to be able to reset that one. It could send a signal from one of its GPIOs out to reset the other one. Um, so that's, you know, there's multiple uses that you could, you know, multiple things you could do with that. Um, and the last header here is um, these right here. There's six pins in this bottom header. Those are the analog um, input pins. You'll see they're labeled with um, A values. Those are really good for reading um, analog signals. So let's say we have a potentiometer. We hook that potentiometer up to that, um, to one of those pins, and we'll be able to get a value, like a number between, let's say, zero and 1,000. Okay. That, that, that as you turn that potentiometer, that number changes from zero to 1,000. So that's what the analog input pins do. Um, and they have other uses, but that can be configured in the software. But that's kind of the primary, um, the primary purpose for those. Excellent, excellent. 
Well, and what, what are these guys right here? So that's an in-circuit programming port. Um, it's, uh, it can be used for a couple things. So you can actually use an Arduino to program another Arduino um, or to program this chip that's been embedded in another circuit somewhere um, by connecting it to these pins. That's one possible use for that. The other thing too is, let's say something happens and you fried this USB chip on here, but you still like to use your Arduino, you could potentially connect another Arduino to this port and program this one from, from wow. another one. So you so, have all your components hooked up and it's like, oh man, I wanna keep on running. You can, you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the other thing is, if you've got the serial port tied up, um, you may not be able to program it over the USB because the USB port shares with this port here. So if you've got these pins hooked up to something and, and you're trying to program and you keep getting an error message, you keep getting an error message, you can't figure out what's going on, well, you gotta disconnect these before you can program over USB. Okay. Another option would be just to use that in circuit programming. Well, one common thing I hear is flexibility and versatility. We're using a development kit that costs us about $37. Yeah, so, so we picked this up um, to do this, this series with. And, and I mean, there's so much stuff in this kit, all kinds of sensors and displays and motors and um, yeah. LEDs and resistors. And I mean, just, just about everything you'd need to really get off you know, get off the yeah. ground with, with, a, yeah. with learning how to use Arduino. Even a breadboard and an awesome attachment for the breadboard to give it a power out. So no doubt as we learn more about this, we're gonna be able to get components for this. We'll put a link down for this starter kit because this is a really good way to design, dream, make your circuit board, test out on the breadboard, and then create your design and send it off to JLC PCB to become a reality. Yeah, it get, what's nice about this is if you just order an Arduino and it shows up in the mail and then you're kind of looking at it and you're like, what am what I gonna do, do with this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so with this, at least you've got a bunch of other stuff you can hook it up to and start playing right away. Uh, Tanner, this is amazing. I can't wait to go down this. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun, Josh. Fantastic. Well, friends, make sure you hit the subscribe bell. A huge thanks to our friends at JLC PCB for making this Tech Channel content possible. JLC PCB wants to take your ideas and make them a reality through your printed circuit board designs. All right, our next step, I guess, is we're gonna be showing people how to uh, start programming. Right? Yeah, so the next episode we do, I wanna start talking about what the, what the code looks like. And Beautiful. Can't wait. I'm gonna be learning something. Hope you guys do too. We'll see you next time.